Determination of Soil Texture by Sedimentation and Decantation Method Soil texture can be defined as the proportion of sand, silt and clay particles that make up the mineral fraction of the soil. Soil physical properties and movement of air and water through the soil are affected by the soil texture. As you can see in the figure, soil aggregates are the basic unit of soil structure. Soil aggregates consist of clay, sand and silt like primary soil particles and organic matter. Organic matter act as cementing agent to bind soil aggregates together. Sand, silt and clay are the only particles used to determine the soil texture. Since organic matter doesn't include for soil texture analysis, we have to remove soil organic matter content to analyze the soil texture precisely. The solid component of the soil sample consists of minerals and organic matter at this time. Here we used hydrogen peroxide to remove organic matter from the soil. H2O2 can decompose the organic matter into carbon dioxide, water and into oxygen. Organic carbon was released as carbon dioxide from the system. After the reaction, inherent dark color of the soil sample will be bleached. This particular process acts as a self-indicating mechanism. Chemical dispersion of soil was taken place by adding sodium hexametaphosphate as the sodium ion releasing agent into the soil suspension. Sodium cations exchange with calcium and magnesium cations which are the flocculating agents in the soil medium. Soil particles with a diffuse layer saturated with sodium ions tend to act as individual particles. Here we can adopt the Stokes law principle to the soil suspension. When soil particles are suspended in water, they tend to sink. Because the density of most soil particles is similar, their settling velocity is proportional to the square of the diameter of the particles. These are the terms of Stokes' law. When it comes to the soil particle size classification, both USDA and ISS standards can be used. USDA standards define soil texture classification system. ISSS standards define soil particle ranges. According to the Stokes law, larger particles settles more quickly than the smaller ones. If the densities are similar, this is the calculation of settling time for all size sealed particles dispersed to the maximum height. Travelling distance was taken as 10 cm and 0.002 mm is the smaller silt particle size. This is the calculation of settling time for sand particles dispersed to the maximum height. Here also travelling distance was taken as 10 cm and 0.02 mm is the smallest sand particle size. Soil Texture Triangle The soil texture triangle is one of the tools that soil scientists use to visualize and understand the meaning of soil texture names. The textural triangle is a diagram which shows how each of these 12 textures is classified based on the percent of sand, silt and clay in each. These percentages are based on the USDA standards. Procedure As the first step, you have to weigh out 
20 grams of soil and transfer it into a beaker. Then add 100 milliliters of 3% H2O2 and heat while stirring until the soil gets a bleached color. Here we heat the mixture to increase the reaction rate. Next add 5 milliliters of sodium hexametaphosphate and 50 milliliters of distilled water into the soil mixture. Now stir it for 10 minutes. Now transfer all the contents into a 600 milliliter tall beaker with a stripe of 10 cm mark. Then make the volume up to a height of 10 cm using distilled water. Start the mixture thoroughly and allow the suspension to stand steady on a laboratory bench. Note the time at this point. Water filled rubber tube was used to siphon the supernatant. While siphoning, please make sure that 600 milliliter beaker side of the rubber tube should be released first. At here, it's very important that not to disturb the settled sediment. As well, don't forget to transfer all the supernatant entered into the rubber tube. Repeat the process until the supernatant is clean like water. Keep the residue for calculation of silt. Now we have to record the total volume of clay alligate collected. A 1 litre measuring cylinder was used to measure the total volume. Then take 50 millilitres of alligate and transfer it into an evaporating dish. Now repeat the process for cell. Then you have to allow the mixture to settle for the period of 3 minutes and 42 seconds. Then siphon the supernatant liquid from 600 milliliter tall beaker as not to disturb the sediment. Measure the total silt alicate volume as earlier by using 1 litre measuring cylinder. Then take out 50 millilitres from the alicate and transfer it into an evaporating dish. Afterwards, separate the fine and coarse sand by passing the remaining sediment through a 70 mesh sieve then dry each fraction and take the wear of each. We have to use a hot water bath to evaporate then you can place the evaporating dishes in the oven. For the texture calculations we have to find the moisture content and organic matter content in the soil. We can use the same soil subsample for both calculations. Here 
we have triplicate the procedure to increase the accuracy. First, you have to take the empty weights of crucibles and weigh in 10 grams of soil. Then, place them in the oven until it reach a constant weight. Usually, it takes 6 to 8 hours. This process only removes the soil moisture content. Afterwards, take the oven dried weight of the soil samples. Then, place them again in the muffle furnace at 360 degrees Celsius temperature for 3 hours. This process will remove organic matter from the soil samples. Now, keep the crucibles in a desiccator to reach to the room temperature. Then get the weights of the samples. Now you can do the calculations. This is the calculation procedure for total clay content. And this is how we calculate the total silt content. And this is for total sand content.